by NSK Information Technology in Boston. NSK makes IT work. And by McHugh Well Drilling in Pembroke, Massachusetts, serving individual and business well pump and test boring needs since 1952. And now we present your host, Mr. Robert Copper. Hello, this is Robert Copper, and this is Robert Copper Show. And we're, it's a pleasure to be with Rob Roy for the fourth show about his time during the Second World War as a torpedo bomber uh, pilot and all those uh, adventures. So, uh, how are you, Mr. Roy? I am fine. It's good to see you again. Now, I see some Asian money here. Yes, they gave us, we did <laughs> some missions along the uh, South China coast and they gave us that to carry in our flight suit in case we got forced down. When we were flying near the Chinese coast, we were, if we were on a particular flight, we were to carry that with us. And then if we were forced down, we could show it to somebody who approached us with a gun and it would explain that who we were and why we were there. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we also have with us uh, Mr. Red Hot Flower Chan. That's his name in Chinese. That's how it's translated. Uh, we know him as David Chan, and he'll uh, translate this letter for us. Mr. Chan. This is probably a piece of a legal document. Mm -hmm. And it, it does say uh, the, um, uh, the Air Force from America, actually the American force, come to help us, the Chinese, to, uh, together to fight. Hope, we hope our people and our soldiers will be together as one body to help each other out, to solidify as one body, so that our mind will be as one to fight. And uh, down below here is uh, from the Republic, uh, the government from Republic of China, and the Air Force Committee, and they seal it. This one here, the, the number 15829, Probably uh, three nine. That probably on January, some night in the, in the year of 1938. They usually they use the four letters on each each like uh, each statement or sentence. They are mostly accurate, you know, because simplify and accurate. This is the old Chinese writing. Uh, four Chinese words in one statement, so that this way will be more accurate and simplify. So. Uh, that's how we write before, the, from the old school. Yeah, this one is the Air Force from America, the American Air Force. Okay. Actually. Come to our China to help to fight, okay. to join us to fight. This one is hope. Hope our people and our soldiers will solidify as one body to help each other. And the, um, this is from the... Uh, the government of uh, the government from uh, Republic China, um, mostly now the Republic of China is Taiwan, okay, not the communist, the mainland China, and this is the uh, from the uh, Air Force Committee. All right, very good. Thank you very uh, much. I hope I um, I uh, <coughs> translate it right. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you, Mr. Chan, for that uh, interesting translation of that uh, letter on silk. Thank you. Now, Rob. I find these photographs fascinating, uh, this one in particular, of all the carriers out there. There's the Big E. And that's the Enterprise. Mm -hmm. There was another photograph of here, in here that I saw which showed the, the flak and fire that you guys had to dodge when you were up in the air. I'm not that's sure. a piece of a, a plane we just shot down. The wing, yeah. This chart shows our... Uh, all right. Position, and here we are down along the Chinese coast. Now here I see a letter in French. We carry this while we were flying along the French and New China coast, and this should explain who we are and why we're there. What made you think that the French and the Chinese would, would kill you? Well, uh, we don't know who's in their country, but maybe there's some Japanese people there who mm -hmm. would love to kill us. We have with us uh, Molly Abrahamson, uh, who speaks French, 
to uh, translate this letter, that, which is written in French, that uh, Roy carried with him during the war uh, when he was over French Indochina. So Molly, maybe you could tell us what this, this says. Okay, so it says, The carrier of this letter is a pilot gunman of the American Naval Aviation. Um, he will be in your vicinity to attack the forces of Japanese occupation and to help you liberate the odious odious yoke or something referring to the Japanese that's probably not very nice um, occupy, occupying you and your country for a long time. If his ignorance of language and morals and customs prevents him to tell you himself give this letter to a translator and permit him to tell you of our patriotism and our good heart. That's what I have. Thank you. This was again basically uh, that the pilots carried with them in enemy territories or other territories even neutral territories to help explain what they were doing on on these people's uh, land. So, uh, thanks again. Welcome. We have here um, a Thanksgiving Day menu from 1944, the Bachelor Officer's Mess. Well, we were at Barber's Point Naval Air Station on the island of Oahu, Hawaii. We were starting with a shrimp cocktail, and we had cream of tomato soup, Green olives, salted crackers, sweet pickles. Then we got to the real material roast, young turkey with sage dressing, giblet gravy, and cranberry sauce. I didn't know they grew cranberries in Hawaii. Baked spiced Virginia ham, buttered asparagus tips, French peas, candied sweet yams, whipped fluff potatoes and for dessert we had mince pie with vanilla ice cream we had pumpkin pie if you'd prefer and then made dinner mints and mixed nuts so that was quite a thanksgiving this is new over. year's day dear mother we are now at sea at last and i am allowed to tell you where we were last stationed we were on the island of Oahu in the Hawaiian group. It was very dull there, but we flew down to the island of Hawaii now and then on our days off. Hawaii is a very pretty island. Everything is green and there are a large number of waterfalls over cliffs overlooking the ocean on the eastern side. There are two large, I remember we <laughs> debated flying through the uh, <laughs> But then we thought that's kind of yeah. too dangerous. We spent our two-day rest leave at a very pleasant hotel, the Volcano House, situated on the rim of Kalawe Crater, on the side of Mauna Kea, one of the two large volcanoes on the island. It was a very interesting and restful two days. So far, our sea voyage has been enjoyable. We are provided with the best possible living facilities aboard ship. I am sharing a large, comfortable stateroom with George McLaughlin, who is in Torpedo Squadron 84 also. The food is excellent and available at any hour. Our ready room, where we spend most of our time, is kept wonderfully cool by a large air conditioning system. The seats are adjustable and it is not too difficult to sleep in them. Don't tell the skipper. We spend our time, while not flying ourselves, watching other planes land and take off, working on our own airplane, observing gunnery drills, taking athletics on the flight deck, or just sitting around uh, looking, uh, having bull sessions. One of the interesting customs aboard the ship I have noticed is the dinner call for officers. Two men, one with a flute and one with a drum, go through officers' country. That's where our private rooms are. Uh, every evening before dinner, pausing periodically to play the roast beef of England. <laughs> there is a conditioning room for officers aboard the ship also where we can go for a rub down if we have time. I had one after athletics yesterday and I certainly felt relaxed after the rub down. 
Of course, I can't tell you where we are and what we are doing, but we are certainly are doing things. I received two letters from you, and one from Papa Kai's, that's my grandfather, dated October 10th or 12th. They had been forwarded to the wrong Rob Roy. <laughs> Love to all. Rob. So you're out at sea now. That's interesting. Yes, we're heading off to war, finally. Now this is Planet of the Day for Monday, January 8th, 1945. This was like a ship's newspaper. They put it out in the BOQ every morning. And so maybe you could read sort of what goes on. This would give us an idea of what goes on aboard okay. ship. This was the Planet of the Day for January 8th, 1945. And it lists all the standard mm -hmm. things. I see underway, general quarters, ship's work, carry out of air department plan of the day. And then that lists the times, maybe you could go through some. Now here there are notes, torpedo defense is reserved as a call, meaning the business for the gunnery engineering and CNR departments. When this call is sounded, it is imperative that gun stations be manned quickly. Those not having torpedo defense stations refrain from taking a sightseeing position topside so that passageways and ladders will not be choked by unnecessary personnel. Ladders is a Navy term for steel piece. The following was received from the Commander, 3rd Fleet. Luzon is now a bloody battle ground. The enemy is fighting to the death to destroy our... Uh, expeditionary forces and to kill every undestroyed enemy plane is potential death to our many comrades. This is the time for great effort and determination. Give it your best and God bless you. That was Admiral Halsey. Mm. <laughs> and then there's a note, uh, note at the bottom. Lost brown wallet containing ID card, money order, driver's license, pictures and cash. Find it, please return to the executive officer's um, office. But uh, just basically here we have uh, uh, how the day goes for you, you sailors there. It uh, starts off at 0545, Reveille still all bedding in, in flash-proof covers. Um, 0610, sound officer's call on officer's circuit. 0615, general quarter, set modified condition, able below the third deck. 0710, set condition, Baker. What did uh, condition well, these Baker? These were specific uh, general quarters was when you were expecting an enemy attack. And oh, at yeah. certain places you have to go. Uh, 0715, sunrise, secure general quarters. Again, at 715 to 0800, breakfast for all personnel not on watch. Uh, 0725, sweep down all decks and ladders, empty all trash containers at incinerator. 0800 to 0830, breakfast for 0400 and 0800, watch only. Turn to prepare ship for action, muster on station, submit reports to the executive officers by 1200. And then it goes on, 0900, recognition school for the L division, starboard watch, in crew's reception room. What would that uh, mean? Well, they, they, this was for the ship crewmen, and they uh, would do these training sessions for them. Mm -hmm. Normally, the guy that is only job is to sweep <laughs> down below decks doesn't get involved. Yeah. I don't know if this was to scare them or make them more useful. But, uh, Croft in charge, Lieutenant Croft, Lieutenant J.G. Croft in charge. Uh, about prepare to fuel from tankers, so you're refueling at sea. Uh, 1100, diff dinner for starboard watch. 1200, dinner for port watch. 1300, turn to prepare ship for action. Sweep down all decks and ladders, empty all trash containers to the incinerator. Recognition school for L division, port watch in crew's reception room. Lieutenant J.G. Flynn in charge. 1700 port watch, 1800 supper for starboard watch, 1818 sunset, darken ship, set modify conditions, able below the third deck, password, gunnery department man all battle stations, 1900 
Band concert, concert at Elevator 2 on Hangar Deck, 1918. Ease the watch, set conditions, Baker. I'd like to find out what that condition well, Baker means. Something, the next step down from general quarters. Yeah. Or, uh -huh. uh, so, and you've read the notes, but that pretty much explains what goes on aboard ship uh, on a typical day. Now, this fellow looks here, Rob. Uh, Ensign Kevin O. Scott veers toward the edge of the Big E's flight deck. Uh, did he escape or did it go over? I think it went over, but they pulled him out. Uh, well, a well, destroyer. We have a lifeguard destroyer follow the carrier when it's doing landings to pick up. Oh, that makes sense, yeah. 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 But you're on deck, and this is a photograph of a piece of plane landing by, or is that a bomb? Yeah, this, a plane has just crashed, and this is some of the parts of it oh. floating. So that landed pretty yeah. close. They were trying to ram themselves into the ship, so there were a lot of folks. Yeah, us. and here this picture shows uh, a uh, carrier that states are really hit. hit. Uh, meaning uh, they won't have to fight the war anymore. They can go home. Oh, is that what that means? Stateside hit means you're going, you're going home, because yeah. it was hit seriously enough. Okay, now here, now we have a couple of pictures here. Could you tell us about this picture? This is is this your uh, this squadron? Is my uh, are you squadron? Yes. Mm -hmm. And we were on the rim of one of the craters on the island of Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Doing a little sightseeing. Yes. Here's a note. Following received from the Secretary of the Navy. All hands again take hats off to the performance of the Third Fleet. Following message was sent by Admiral Halsey to Vice Admiral McCain and Attack Force 38. Can you read that? Okay. Thanks for your message. Fighting shoulder to shoulder with old and trusted comrades is a fine thing. Together we have watched our young and trusted comrades who did their did the actual fighting, and that too is a fine and inspiring experience. I think all hands except the nips, in other words, the jets and rejoice over this, over the results introduced by this team of old poops and young squirts and lieutenant commanders. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now this you were saying is a map this is, of This is what the South Enterprise did all the time we were out in this area. Is this the South China Sea? This is the South China Sea. This yeah. is the Pacific Ocean. Mm -hmm. Okay. These are the Marianas. Those are the Japanese islands. And and Korea, China, and uh, French Indochina, yeah. um, and the Philippines. And these are showing the, the positions of the uh, carriers that you would take off from. Yes. After, a, for example, a South China Sea raid or a raid on Japan, we'd go back to this. That's all, and relax, and it was very awesome. This only shows a few, but there will be a hundred track warships all anchored in this one. Carriers and destroyers Carriers and battleships. Wow, cruisers. A large fleet. Large fleet. Carrier now, vessels. we have in uh, red uh, lettering here, First Tokyo Carrier Raid, uh, Night Pacific uh, Torpedo Squadron 90. Is it, That's your squadron? Yes. Pacific Fleet. Flight schedule, dog-2 alternate, February 17th, 1945. Well, this is the uh, schedule. Pilot and crew. I'm listed as standby. In other words, if one of these guys gets sick or if flight doesn't start, then mm -hmm. uh, next. Flight and this schedule. was the first Tokyo carrier raid. Yes. We carry this with us. This is a map of the one of the big islands of Japan. This is Kyushu. Mm -hmm. and, uh, what does the uh, red uh, mean? What is what is that? Well, if we it's wanted to identify ourselves to somebody, we tell them how your many position. Degrees we were. Yeah. yeah. Here is a letter dated March nineteen forty-five to Anne. It's my sister. Okay. Could you read that? Okay. Dear Anne, I have just received a letter from you that mother found at home. So that's what happens to all my mail. I was glad to receive the letter anyway. We are allowed to tell some things about our activities up to January 25th. You would probably 
tell where we've been by reading the newspapers. But I'll tell you anyway. We came out from Oahu on our carrier and joined up with the fleet. We made attacks on Luzon, that's one of the Philippine islands, and Formosa. Uh, and then we, it's now called, uh, we've changed the name for Taiwan, it's called, uh, in those days it was Formosa. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we entered this China Sea, closer to home actually. But it seemed, yeah, we, we calculated if we were going to quit, which way would we go to get back to Boston? And somewhere down the South China Sea, we're exactly halfway, halfway yeah. either way. But it seemed to be farther away at the time. We went down to French Indochina, to Hong Kong, and then up to Formosa again. Then we left the China Sea and went up to Okinawa, and then back to port. I guess you can figure out where we've been lately. Anyway, I'll be able to write about it after a while. I'll have to stop in at Gibbs and Cox. That's a naval architect firm that she worked for in New York City. Hmm. Uh, I'll have to stop in at Gibbs and Cox when I come back to see all those beautiful girls you mentioned. Love a rod. <laughs> that was to my sister. Now, it looks like some uh, deck Yeah, damage. the flight deck is all bulged up from this explosion. The, oh. the plane went through the flight deck and then blew up, and it blew up. The, Pushed was, the deck up. So, so we couldn't fly it anymore. That deck's made out of wood? Teeth? Yes, it's on steel, but mm -hmm. it's, it's wood. Yeah. Well, when we were at Ulysses Atoll, they had an island called Mog Mog that they took all the breakables off and served us uh, whiskey uh, <coughs> drinks. We were not allowed to drink on the ship or while we were flying, so we would look forward to these trips back to Ulysses, that's all, and go ashore to Mog Mog and quaff a few. Mm -hmm. and you see, he's had more than Yeah. And you would just go there and drink, and that's pretty much... Yes. Yeah. Were there natives so, there that you could interact no, with? they just cleared all the stones, all the natives. Everything. They just, just had a bar. Wow. Well, we've been out being shot at for the three weeks before we got here. So, so you needed to go on wine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Here we have uh, United States Pacific Fleet, Commander First Carrier Task Force Pacific, Confidential Mem Memorandum for Task Force 58 Pilots, Subject, Air Combat Notes for Pilots, Published and Post in All Ready Rooms. Can you read those? There are okay. five, three or four entries. The coming raid on Tokyo will produce the greatest air victory of the war for carrier aviation, but only if every air group commander, squadron commander, combat team leader, section leader, and individual pilot abides by the fundamental rules of air combat that have been taught to them since the war started. The battle will be primarily a fighter combat. The enemy will be forced to come up to protect the capital of his empire. He will be uh, aggressive and eager to display his ability to his people on the ground. In his eagerness and inexperience, he will uh, meet his downfall in great numbers, but only if you keep your heads <laughs> and apply your teamwork to the utmost. After the fighter sweeps have reduced the fighter strength of the enemy, the torpedo bombers and the dive bomber squadrons will be launched to inflict some permanent damage where it will do the most good. Each bomber strike will be given adequate fighter escort and will be launched behind or under cover of fighter sweeps. Bomber and torpedo pilots will be well briefed and furnished with photographs of their primary targets. Keep your formation unclosed up so your escort can cover you and your free gunners support each other. Seek the approach routes that will be given you by your ACI. It will be based on a flak analysis. That's an aircraft fire. If you become separated, Join first friendly plane you meet, regardless of its type. Remember that torpedo bombers and 
Guy bombers can weave just as fighters can. This prevents enemy fighters from getting a good shot. When you sight your target, go in fast with each plane diving from a slightly different angle than the plane ahead. Recover in the direction of the rendezvous point or retirement course, which should be specified in the briefing. Torpedoes were only used at sea. Were they ever dropped yes, on land? Yes, but we carried, we rarely carried torpedoes. We carried bombs, mm -hmm. we carried incendiary bombs, we had rockets. Torpedo bombers would carry all sorts of bombs. Yeah, and on a trip like this, we'd have bombs. Mm -hmm. This is the rest of that letter. It says, rendezvous quickly for mutual support from own guns and VF escort. Put your bombs on the target after carrying it all the way in there. Usually an aggressive diving attack provides more safety than a high pullout, which only breaks the continuity of your dive and makes it difficult if you're not if not impossible to rejoin your division. Commencing at sunset and through the hours of darkness, night air groups will that, that would be you um, will be over enemy territory intruding and heckling. Intruding and heckling. The large majority of VF pilots in the TF-58 will engage air combat for the first time over Tokyo. This fact will not be too great a handicap if pilots will remember the fundamentals and keep calm. When you sight your first Jap, resist the impulse to follow your in first individual reaction. If you're a wingman, follow your section leader and never leave him. If you are a section leader, work in unison with your team leader. If you're a team leader, fly your team according to plan. If you un unavoidably separate from your formation, join the first friendly plane you see regardless of its type. It is a proven fact that our VF working together can't handle four times as many Japs. In general, the melee in, in melee, this is only possible if our fire, fire fighters stay in the same general airspace. Stay clear of the base of clouds if over anti-aircraft positions. On the other hand, if you get in a tough spot, seek cloud cover and resort to your combat attitude instrument flying to extricate yourself. Join the first friendly plane you see. Try not to get too excited. They're sending this to 19-year-old kids who have never done this before, so they don't know. Remember that your plane is superior to the Japs in every way. He is probably more afraid of you than you are of him. Be aggressive, falling back on your defensive tactics only if caught at a disadvantage. Remember defensive tactics require two units working together as a team. The weave will get you out of a tight spot if you watch your line. Remember that the weave need not follow a definite pattern. This is two planes going this way. Mm -hmm. um, the Japs have been taught that the weave usually progresses along a straight line of advance. If a crowd of Japs pile up behind you and above, wait until they commit themselves to an attack. Then, instead of weaving in 90 degree turns, go around 180 or 360. This will completely throw them off. Conform to the plan of attack as laid down by your squadron commander or sweep leader. Get back to the rendezvous point at the proper time. How would you know when the proper time was if uh, if you're out in, in well, the middle of a war? I mean, they had laid out a plan before we took off. Mm -hmm. This is primarily for the day squadrons. Uh, we go at night. And we yeah. we weren't bound by any rules at all. Yeah. How did you fly? How how did you if if you mentioned that uh, the day squadrons had more set schedules and rules, whereas flying at night. You didn't. So what did Guy do? Well, we had specific, we were, for example, uh, one night over Japan, I was to uh, keep this area with their lights off and keep them from repairing damage. For example, it was done by the day squadrons, and we did it by periodically making a run and firing a rocket or dropping a bomb. Occasionally, 
and we would do that for two or three hours until the next guy came to replace us. And we'd do it all night so they couldn't turn on their lights and get their bulldozers mm -hmm. out and repair all the things. So that was the main thing to do, to keep, keep the lights out so they couldn't uh, function. Did the Japanese have night planes? Uh, yes, but uh, by the time we were out there, <laughs> I don't think we ever saw it. Jeff, uh, we took a terrible beating. And, uh, we were flying with no lights on. Yeah. They were flying with no lights on. So. That's just amazing. Uh, I mean, did mid-air collisions occur? Occasionally. Occasionally. We, not with our own guys, because we know what time this guy was leaving this point and what time he was due to come and relieve us. And mm -hmm. We beat the hell out of his way by yeah. the time he was there. Actually, it was the landing on the ship that was scarier than the Japanese. Uh, yeah. Again, that was done at night with no lights. The success of the air combat over Tokyo is assured if you remember the fundamental outline above. You must remember them if you want to fly again. Never break section, never let the section break down. Keep 160 knots IAS, that's indicated yeah, airspeed. Yeah, yeah. Pull out of bombing and strafing runs at a thousand feet. Don't dive down on a jab without looking above and around. Fire short bursts in order to avoid stoppages. Keep a hundred rounds to get, get home on. In other words, leave some ammunition, don't use it all at once. Stay away from the base of clouds, except when using cloud cover. If you come separated, join the first friendly plane you see. That's repeated all throughout these, these orders. If you become separated, join the first friendly plane you see. Some soap salesman who was Secretary of the Navy after the war was going to sell the Enterprise for scrap metal. It was in every battle of World War II except the battle when it was escorting the Doodle Raid. And some guy sold it for junk after the war. I bet they regret doing that. They're beating the big E into plowshares these days, and I resent it. I imagine a lot of people, apart from me and Bull Halsey, resent it too. The Enterprise, that magnificent aircraft carrier, has been sold for scrap for $561,000, and it's being blowtorched into raw metal. The fact that the big E cost around $50 million when money was money is not the case in point. Here's a letter from uh, the father of uh, John Albrecht, who was your first uh, radar man that flew with you uh, in the torpedo bomber. And this is basically thanking you uh, for not for bringing their son home safely. I think it is. Dear Mr. Roy, Mrs. Albrecht, and myself, John's parents. We're extremely happy to receive your very thoughtful letter wherein you wrote us that your missions had been completed and that you and your crew were on your way home. You were very correct in surmising that we were worried about John, especially since he has been in a combat zone, and more specifically, as we knew that you were over or near Japan most of that time. It is the little things in life, like your kindness in writing us, that make life a lot more easier. It is our hope that before you or John are reassigned to combat duty, that with God's permission, all or most of this will be over. Of course, this is a most optimistic view, but with the action that the super ports are giving to the homeland of the Japs, it may bring to them the futility of carrying on. John has written us on various occasions that he had won, if not the best pilot in the group, and asked that we not worry about him. But with the knowledge of your mother's anxieties, you can easily recognize our feelings in the matter since you were making night hops. Again, thanking you for your very thoughtful letter, which was most appreciated, and assuring you that you will be Remembered in our prayers for your safety and well-being, which are daily. Very truly yours, John Romich.
That's a nice, nice letter. So you wrote the father of your one of your crew members to, to let him know. Yeah, that when when we finally knew we were heading back to Seattle, uh, we were allowed to write to people and tell them mm -hmm. that we were. This is the first time we've ever been able to. I'm sure he's very happy to receive that letter. And now, uh, in a, in closing, we have a very happy letter that uh, Roy sent, was able to send to his mother. Yeah, it's dated 18 May 1945. This is after we've been kamikaze and we know we aren't going to fly off the ship anymore. And I wrote, and we were allowed to tell things like that to our parents. Dear mother, guess what? I'm on my way home at last. I can't give a specific date, but I expect to arrive on the West Coast in about three weeks. It doesn't seem possible after so many false alarms. My big problem is my uniforms. If you haven't received my letter of May 10th, disregard it when it arrives concerning my uniforms. Send them to Uncle Conrad if you haven't, or he lived in San Francisco, and I, I, we were guessing we'd go into either San Diego or Seattle, but in any event, that would be the best place to have them. Uh, send them to Uncle Conrad if you haven't already done so. The big thing is to make sure that they will be on the West Coast in three weeks. If you have already sent them to the door I mentioned, that's okay. Let me know what you have done and try to send them by the fastest means possible. I've got to get this off so it will leave tomorrow. Love Rob. And that was the end of your, your service, did you? Yes, the, the Enterprise was programmed to be repaired in Seattle, so they left us on it, and so we sailed with it for, for three weeks to, mm -hmm. get, to, to get to Seattle. Then and we could do whatever we wanted. And after that, you didn't go back out again. That was at the end of the war. Yes, they made me an instructor back down at Fort Lickerdale again. To, to Flight to, instructor. At two tours. Mm -hmm. And how was that? Did you... Uh, did you find yourself to be a, a good teacher? Did you enjoy teaching? I guess. Mm -hmm. Probably not. I was probably talking a lot of time. Telling jokes. Well, thank you so much, uh, uh, Mr. Roy. This has been uh, quite an adventure to follow you through uh, the Second World War as a torpedo bomber. Thank you for joining us again for uh, part four of the series. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed this. So long. Thank you.